One of the most common windows that you will use in load call is the ticket window, which can be accessed in a variety of locations. So if you click into three dot menu and click view on a ticket, then it'll open up this. Uh, this is also things found in dispatch and accounting and in all other parts of the software, wherever tickets are involved, you have the ability to oftentimes open up this full ticket window and gain access to all information on the ticket. So this uh, ticket window is broken down into a few different tabs, details, maps, measurements, etc. We're going to go through each of them and talk about some of the uh, different features of them in the video. So we're going to go ahead and jump over and start talking about details. The details tab in the ticket window kind of gives a bunch of the top level important information about the ticket. Uh, it has the ticket number, the job number that's tied to the ticket number, the statuses, and etc. As we go down here, you can see that it also has a lot of the information that's important for billing and for location information. So right here we have the purchaser, which in this case is Bravo Energy Corps, the region that we ran under for that specific purchaser, any purchase order numbers or secondary purchase order numbers. And then we have the cargo with the um, primary measurement, the one that usually is the most important here. So we, in this case, have loaded barrels, which has, in this case, gross and net. The next part down here is the pickup information. So the pickup location was the Ironwood Tank Battery, uh, Colorado City, Mich Mitchell County, Te Texas. Um, so you got the city, state, county, all sort of stuff there. The producer property numbers and all the different information about this facility that may be relevant. Um, dock types, barrels per inch, things like that. The next section is the drop-off location information, city, state, county name, any additional IDs, and the account that was dropped off, and if there's an associate account number. And then down here, you can see how many miles that route was, the driver information, and then depending on some settings and your user permissions, you have the ability to potentially open up some of the code-related um, parts of this page. But uh, you'll notice that there's quite a few different little icons next to a lot of the uh, things here. These are the ability to view or edit the uh, different components here. So for example, up here at the top, you have the status completed with a little checkbox next to it with an edit icon. So if I click on that, it's going to change it from kind of visit the uh, just text there to a drop down, And I could go ahead and change this um, field to a different property. So instead of doing completed, I could say, hey, this was an incompleted load. And then I just need to click enter to confirm. And so this says you're sure you want to change the status. Doing so will interrupt their load. Well, this is a pass load, so it's not going to interrupt the driver. It'll just affect the accounting information. So I can go ahead and click update. And you'll notice that the banner up here went from blue, which means complete, to red to incomplete. So whenever you open up a load, depending on the color at the top, it kind of gives you an indicator of what the uh, status of the load is. So green is kind of like a green light. It's live. It's going. Blue is complete. Red is incomplete or a reject. The uh, sign of the other ones are different colors. This one's like kind of a darker gray and unassigned is probably about the same color since it hasn't been assigned out yet, a lighter gray. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back over to complete, but uh, pretty easy to go in and edit those fields. Uh, you can also change the reject status. In this case, it's accept because it's completed, but if it was a rejected load uh, for this specific cargo type, you have a bunch of different oil related things, high bottoms, uh, temperature, gravity, things like that. So, and if I don't want, if I want to kind of close out and not edit it, I can click on this little X to cancel edit, which will go back to this view. Um, you'll notice we can edit reject notes and, uh, you know, things like property numbers and things like that. So that's kind of the blue little edit will open up either a drop down or a text entry where you can just type in and click enter on your keyboard in order to confirm the change. So the uh, other ones in here, if you see a green magnifying glass, what that will do is it will open up a window where you can see information about the uh, specific um, thing that you're looking at. So if we wanted to look at what metered oil has in terms of measurements or any of that information, we can pull up that pop up. If you want to look up any information on the pickup location, we could come into here and open up windows with information of, you know, tanks, contact information, things like that. So the green magnifying glasses open up just you know, additional information for that specific item. And there's only a few of them in there. The next one here, the yellow little um, route icons. If we click on these, they open up what is called the reroute window or the ability to change this load. So it doesn't have like a blue edit in here. You actually have to go into the yellow reroute 
And in here, you could change um, information about the uh, route. You could change the purchaser, the cargo, pick up drop-off locations if the load was created incorrectly in the beginning. In this case, maybe I'll go ahead and put in and change the uh, um, purchaser region, which you can see right here that had a little uh, blue notification at the top that said that that was um, properly changed. But uh, yeah, what that does in this case would probably just change some of the accounting information. So uh, changing the region may change that. So that's the uh, little yellow icon in here. You can see that there's quite a few things you can change. PO numbers, which you can change out here also. Purchaser, regions, cargoes, pickup drop-off locations, docs, accounts, distances. You can see a map and directions down here as well. And then the last icon down here, if we scroll down, is the red icon that looks like a little person. This icon lets you change the uh, driver information. So if I click on this, we get access to update the driver, the carrier, the truck or trailer that's being used on this, which obviously will affect accounting information as well, depending on who you pay out um, for completing the load in there. So uh, those are the main icons on this page. So blue is kind of just like a quick edit. Yellow opens up the uh, reroute information, so kind of the, the load information, pick up drop of locations, things like that. The red opens up who transported it, edit. And then the green just opens up a, a window with a bunch more information. So yeah, so that's the uh, details tab within the ticket window. Moving on over to the next tab here in the ticket window, it's the uh, map tab. So in here, I can go ahead and load the map which will pull up your point A, point B. So you can see the pickup and the drop off location. You can switch to satellite view, zoom in, zoom out, use street view, all the normal Google Maps sort of things in here. And if we scroll down, you can actually get the uh, turn by turn directions with the mileage, the estimated time to travel there um, in order to do this. So all of the step by step directions if a driver calls in and needs help with that or something. But uh, usually useful to make sure that the mileages look good. So in this case, it's 20.9 miles, which I maybe has it have a different mileage in here since this is kind of some test data. It looks like I put in like 17 miles, but uh, you know, easy to kind of go back and sanity check that. And you could also kind of look through here and see if you see any toll or restricted roads that would change the mileage as well. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, just a Google map showing your pickup and your drop off location. The next tab in the ticket window here is the measurements tab, which what this does is it shows all of the driver entered uh, inputs at both the pickup and the drop off locations. So these are completely dependent on the commodity type that the driver is transporting. In this case, we can go back and see that our driver was transporting metered oil. And for this company, the metered oil measurements are as follows, start meter, stop meter, seal off, time off, etc. as we go down here. Uh, you'll notice that if the measurement was filled out, you have a little green checkbox right here. If it's got the little gray minus sign right here, then it was not necessarily filled out, which a lot of these are kind of optional fields. It looks like there was no mask up or chain of events, so they didn't have to write any notes about it. But uh, you can see in here that those with the yellow uh, asterisk right here have you know validation on them. There's a minimum and a maximum value that they have to go through, so obviously your temperature is going to be somewhere between negative 40 and 220. If it's anywhere out of that, like that's not a valid input. So uh, it has to be in there. And as you scroll through here, you can see some of these don't have an, you know, you don't have the edit ability because in this case, these are photos that the driver took. So it's not something you can really kind of replicate for them. But some of the other ones do have the uh, blue check box next to them that lets you edit them. So if I wanted to go in here and change one of these properties, I could come in here and change the uh, value here. And if I fall way outside of this range, so if we say we're, you know, 8,000 or something, it's going to say, hey, failed to save. Um, you know, that's just not a valid thing in there. So we'll go ahead and, you know, change it to 82.1 in this case. Click enter. And after changing it, you can see that the original value of 82 has been saved. So you can always refer back and, you know, change it back to whatever the driver put in originally. So they put in 82. I changed it to 82.1. But yeah, so you have all these different edits in here. You can see down here that you have also the ability to do a mass edit. So if I click on the mass edit, it's going to open up a window where you can kind of, rather than having to click through um, each one and open up the little uh, text entry and then click enter, you could go into mass edit where you can just edit everything directly and then click save at the bottom. If you were kind of doing these 
completely from scratch, this is probably a good way to go if you need to fill out everything. If you're making just one or two corrections, it's probably easier to not come into this window, but uh, it does support the mass edit there. So yeah, so that's the uh, measurements window here in the, uh, or the measurements tab in the job win or the ticket window. The next tab in the ticket window is the invoice tab. And so what the invoice tab does is it takes the uh, ticket information entered by drivers or on the, you know, initial detail level mileages and things like that and purchasers. And it will automatically calculate out the uh, invoice and the settlement calculations to your um, accounts receivable and payable on a ticket by ticket basis. So up here at the top, you do have some of that basic information that is relevant to how the invoice got calculated the way it did. So typically that would be the purchaser, their region. Um, we're going to skip these for a sec. The driver, carrier, cargo type, primary measurements, um, things like that kind of show up up here. Uh, this next section right here actually is pretty cool. It's the invoice rate sheet settlement and the application rule section. So what these do is they just, they don't show like text here, but you can click on the green magnifying glass. And if applicable in this case, there probably hasn't been a settlement created for this. But if I click on the green magnifying glass, it'll actually open up the invoice information or other information here. So you can see uh, this ticket is a part of this invoice, 21.1.2.bec or whatever. Uh, you can see the invoice total, the dates, all this information in here, and you could actually open up the full invoice in here and kind of go through and look at it as well. So pretty cool to be able to jump directly from a ticket to see which invoice it got included on. Uh, same thing goes for a rate sheet. If you want to see how the rates or uh, how the information was calculated, you can open up and this will open up a new window where you can see the rate sheet that was applied to this specific ticket. So you can see uh, for example, uh, you know, we've got all of these being charged, except for there's no fuel surcharge on this. You could look up any of the different charges in here, uh, the mileage table, things like that. So pretty useful as well. And then the last one right here is kind of useful for troubleshooting. It may look a little intimidating, but if we click on the accounting application rules one here, you can see why it chose which application rules it wanted to. So you have all of this information that may be used in deciding how the rates need to be applied which we cover in the accounting management videos, how to set up these rate sheets and the application rules and things like that. But you can see the uh, um, all the purchaser, pickup drop off locations, other potential things that may be used in determining how to do the invoice. And then the invoice tab will show you how it selected which uh, rate sheet to use. So in this case, it didn't have an exact match for like a route or specific pickup location. We had one rate sheet down here, our standard rates that applied for that purchaser subregion. And so that's how it decided to use this rate sheet. On the settlement side, you can see that the uh, settlement calculations do not use a rate sheet. Instead, they're just doing like a simple 85%. Um, so it doesn't have that whole kind of cascading priority of how we determined how to do the... Uh, um, figure out which rates to charge for the specific ticket. Instead, it's just take 85% of the values from the invoice side and just multiply by that. So pretty useful. And then after we kind of looked at this top section of the invoices, if we scroll down a bit, you can actually see all of the different line items right here. So we can see our chain up, fuel surcharge, uh, which doesn't have anything. It doesn't look like that a chain up event, our mask up, uh, rate per bell for the line haul, et cetera, for both the invoice and the settlement side. And then if you scroll down here, you have the ability to see the totals. So the invoice total, if there's any tax tied to it, if you've got that set up, settlement totals and things like that. Um, down here at the bottom also is the ability to check the box for billing a purchaser or paying a driver. So let's say you have a kind of mix up here where, you know, a ticket was, and this might happen more with like reject loads, but you have a ticket where you want to pay the driver, but you don't want to bill the uh, purchaser for whatever reason, you could uncheck the bill purchaser box. And then obviously the total is going to go to $0. You're not billing them out at all. You can see all of this right here. And the crossed out part shows what it would have been if you were billing them. We're not going to do that. The pay driver is the exact same, but on the driver side, you can see right here. So if you wanted to bill but not pay out the driver for whatever reason, there was a bad termination or something or breach of contract, you could do that as well. And they wouldn't show up in the settlement. So the other thing to note in here is all of these do have edits. So the little blue checkbox thing, if we wanted to come in here and just manually override one of these, let's say, you know, actually it is a chain up. 
Uh, and typically in this case, what you'd want to do, if there was something wrong, you'd want to correct the underlying issue on the ticket so that the data is all looking good. So in this case, if there actually was a chain up event, we should go over into measurements and say, hey, there actually was a chain up event. So I'm going to say, yes, there was a chain of event, click enter. And then if I come back over here into invoice, there's a little refresh icon up here at the top. I'm going to click on that. And now our chain up fee is getting put out to $40. So usually you want to go back and fix the underlying reason there. But we also do have the ability to go in and edit it and just manually change it. So I'm just going to go and zero this back out and click enter. I need to give a reason that says, you know, not paying out or something. Or not, we're not charging for chain up. Not, uh, not charging out chain up. Yeah. Spelling. Hard on a Monday morning. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. And you'll see that we have, it was originally 40, but it's not charged. We're not charging it out. So it's actually zero. So the total down here will be, um, you know, reflected of this 250. And if I wanted to put it back, I could just, you know, edit and put in the 40. So you can in change any of these on the invoice side or the settlement side. And, you know, it'll kind of log out this change right here. And when we get to the logs, you'll see a lot of these events are getting logged in there too. So there's full accountability. But uh, the last thing here on the ticket um, invoice tab here is the yellow magnifying glass, <clears throat> which all that this does, and this is kind of a technical thing, you may never use this, but it lets you see exactly the logic used in calculating out the uh, specific um, line items right here. And in the case of the settlement, we don't have those because this is just 85% of whatever's up here. But if these were using a custom rate sheet, you would also get the yellow magnifying glass. But if I come into here, and click on the yellow magnifying glass, it's gonna show me the logic trace, which the logic trace in this case, we take the number of times or the count of chain up. So there's one chain up, multiply by 40. And then we take whatever we calculated right here, which is 40 and divide by the number of split tickets, which in this case, there are no split tickets. So there's just the one ticket. And uh, so the dollar value before I changed it was 40. And you can come into here and override the cost. So if we wanted to change that, say actually this should be you know 35 instead um you know in the future you'll notice right here now it should have actually originally been 35 before since we kind of overrode it so you have the ability to kind of like do some rate sheet manipulation stuff in here things that you probably never need to do but once in a blue moon it does come up where there needs to be some hardcore you know kind of accounting special situations on tickets where you know someone's made a phone call and there's like just some case where numbers need to change. So within the ticket window in here, you have the full ability to manipulate directly or change the measurements in order to get the calculations to come out or even change some of the underlying information in there in order to uh, uh, get the numbers out. And then each one of these you can see is going to have like different overrides. This has got the wait time cost is default 100. You could override that. And then you can see the logic trace is a little more complicated for this one where if it's a reject, you don't bill. Otherwise, if the wait time is less than an hour, then you just don't charge. Otherwise, you know, you take these, uh, um, you know, further steps in order to calculate it. But yeah, so quite a bit in this section, their invoices are quite complicated at the get go. But once you get familiar with them, uh, it's super flexible and very easy to go in and make sure that uh, you can get the right numbers in the right places so that your customers and that your drivers are billed and paid out quickly and easily and that you can kind of have the flexibility to do, you know, on the fly changes, you know, which come up once in a while. But yeah, we're going to be moving on to the next section now. All right, so the next tab within the tickets window here is the timestamps tab, which is quite a bit simpler than the invoice one was. But uh, in here, basically, all you have is all the time stamped events that have been recorded for this specific ticket. Uh, so date, time, and if applicable, it also have the GPS locations. So you have when the ticket was created, or when the, in this case, it would be the load was created and assigned out to the driver before a ticket was even, you know, in the system. So that's kind of some load information. And then the next step here is when the driver accepted the uh, location or accepted the load and you actually get GPS coordinates for where they were when they did this. So you can click on this little map here and see this is where they were when they did that. And uh, then the next thing is the driver can put in, you know, their ETA. So this person put in an ETA. It obviously was wrong. They, you know, they started the job at six sixteen, and then they said, I'll be there four minutes ago. But, uh, you know, 
it's test data, so that's how it goes sometimes. But uh, the next thing down here, you have timestamps that are related to when they were at the pickup location. So we have, you know, they arrived at the pickup location, they printed at the pickup location their physical, you know, run ticket, and then they left the pickup location. Now this one's highlighted in red as well as the departed drop-off because these are the two most important timestamps on these because these are used within the accounting system and the reporting system in order to kind of like capture the tickets. So these are the most important on there. They must be filled out. Otherwise, this ticket is not going to ever show up in the uh, reports and accounting system. So pretty easy to uh, notice if these aren't showing up, though. The driver has no choice but to do it. As they complete the load, it'll automatically fill this out for them. But yeah, you can check the uh, location here and see, you know, different pickup and drop-off locations where they are actually at and make sure that it matches up with where they were supposed to be. But uh, the last ones down here is you have when the job is completed, um, which means they're done and they're moving on to the next job. And then this other one down here is last updated. So whenever something changes on here, not necessarily from a driver, but if a dispatcher goes in here and changes anything, then you uh, are, can see that um, that information can be updated or it shows up as the last updated here. And uh, any of these ticket or these Timestamps can be adjusted if needed. So if you uh, wanted, if for example, the driver's batteries died on their phone, which shouldn't happen since you plug it in, but if they weren't able to get the ticket finished in here and you had to come in and change it or put something in here, you can click edit and then you can choose the date and time and click enter to save it. And by default, it'll pull whatever your computer's in. So mine's in Mount Center time. But uh, if this actually was, you know, it was 945, it was 9, you know, 55. I can go ahead and click that, click enter, and then now I've updated the timestamp in here. So pretty straightforward timestamps. The important ones are highlighted in red. The other ones are pretty useful on reports as well. But uh, these two are the ones that you need to make sure line up correctly in order to uh, make sure it shows up on the right report. The next tab in the tickets window here is the images tab, which shows any of the images captured by drivers when they were on site. So in here, you'll remember on the measurements tab, there were a few of these, you know, uh, ticket captured in information in here, shipper ticket, lease sign, Getty box, etc. So in order to see those, you can come over here into images, and this is test data, so I just have one image in here. If there are no images, then you can see that it'll say that there's no image in here for these specific tickets, so you can kind of click through here at the bottom. And if you do have an image here, which this one looks super blurry, you may want to, if it's missing or... Um, you know, blurry or something, you may want to upload a uh, replacement image. So you can click on that and then choose an image and then click open to get it to uh, re-upload over it. You can also save these images to your desktop if you want to have a copy of it there. And if it's, you know, not oriented correctly, I could go ahead and flip it, you know, one way or another in order to get it facing the right way up. So uh, these images are taken by drivers, but you do have the ability to upload new ones and then download them or rotate them if they got their phone kind of sideways on that. The next tab in here is specific to uh, different types of oil, but maybe different depending on the commodity types that you're transporting. But uh, the tank tab for specific types of cargo will actually show a tank visualization of how much was drawn out of the tank. So in here, you can see the tank visualization is only supported for gauged loads, and this is a metered load. So if we go to a different ticket down here that does have a uh, gauged oil right here, you can actually see you know, the tank specs, uh, tank name, how much volume it is, the height, the diameter, barrels per inch. And then you can see based on the driver's inputs of the top gauge versus the bottom gauge, you can see how much um, they drew out from the tank and how much was remaining in the tank when they left at the specific time. And it's kind of based off of estimates from the driver input information and any of the tank information provided within the directory. So if this information is correct, obviously the visualization will be wrong as well. But uh, kind of useful to be able to visualize that, especially for uh, logins for producers or others who want to go in there and see kind of like the status of how things were before and after the driver got there uh, in there. So yeah, so that's the uh, tank tab. The next tab in the ticket window here is the mileage log tab, which what this tab includes is just some odometer information that the driver fills in upon completion of their load. So you have the driver's name, the carrier, truck trailer, the dates that the uh, log was created, their start and stop odometer, and then the total miles, and then the breakdown of mileages per state that they were in. So if they cross state lines, there would be multiple states here that sum up to the total mileages in here. 
So uh, this is hand entered by the driver, so it's not necessarily, I mean, if they, they could put in incorrect odometers in here, uh, every time that they finish up, they just put in their new odometer, so something to watch out for there, but uh, it could be useful uh, as a way to kind of check against any other systems that you're using to track mileages for IFTA or other things like that. The next tab in the ticket window is the logs tab, which what this includes is a list of timestamped events of changes being made by office staff. So dispatch, accountants, other people that have access to this ticket window here. So in here you can see a bunch of the changes that I've made previous in this video, deleting, undeleting, changing statuses, changing uh, observed temperature, chain up lease, and some of these have like kind of the technical looking underscores, names put in here, but any of the uh, changes that were made are logged in here so that you can have full accountability when somebody changes something on a ticket and these cannot be edited or deleted so this will be a permanent record of any changes made on this specific load. The last tab here in the ticket window in load call is the notes tab. So this tab just lets you put in notes on a specific ticket uh, and just keep track of them in here. So if there's information that comes to light and you just want that information to be accessible by any of the office staff, whether it's accounts or dispatchers or whatever, you can go ahead and save and edit notes in here. So in this case, maybe we want to say, you know, you know, need to call driver to ask about damaged uh, gate or something like that. So if there's anything that you just want to tag onto here, you can go ahead and put it on there. We have it show up as a sticky note in here. You can add multiple of these. And then if we want to delete them later, we can go ahead and delete them and remove them. So there's no longer the sticky note tied to the job. But uh, this is a useful way to kind of just store some extra information on here that uh, is, you know, internal only to office staff. Other people don't have access to this. The drivers don't have access to this. So uh, that you can um, just store uh, to do or future information here that may be useful down the road. But uh, yeah, so that is the... Uh, ticket window here in load call it's accessible in a lot of locations and used quite commonly so even though this video is quite long a lot of useful information here that should hopefully help make using load call uh, easier for you to do